Hi everybody and welcome back to Sew Along with Jan and part three of the December Kimberbell mini quilt. So we're going to finish our last uh, three little blocks for this quilt in this video. It'll be the tree block, the holly block, and the hat block. Now in these videos, um, in this video, we'll actually be using the little December uh, embellishment kit. So they had some little fuzzy kind of minky like stuff. Um, for the hat, for the little the little band on the hat and the pom pom on the hat, so that's for the hat one, and then they had a piece of felt that they are going to use for the um, holly and the what was it the holly and the tree. There's a Christmas tree, so that's that what this little piece of felt is for. So we've got that for the tree. So we're going to start with the tree. <clears throat> And I've got my little piece of felt here ready to go too. Um, and this one is going to have a pink background. So I've got my pink thread in my needle and I've got just regular bobbin thread in the bobbin. Um, I think all of these fabrics needed Shape Flex or SF 101. So this was the background fabric, this piece, the pink, and then the green for the postage stamp part. And these both have Shape Flex on the back. Okay, so we got those all ready to go. Got my little piece of felt here, and we need to get our design. So this one says to use the star seven. So I didn't have star seven, so I've been using stars three. So we're going to get our quilting here, and I'm going to get stars three. Let's see here, Kimberbell quilting. Oh, come on, fingers. Sometimes my fingers don't work on these, on the touch screens very well. Let's see. Whoops. So if you go too fast, you, you overshoot it. And there's a lot of, oh, here we go. Stars three. And then we're going to go to the embroidery files and block by block. And then this one again is going to be four by four. So we have, this is the stars that look sort of like the snowflakes. So we're going to grab our little four by four design here. And you can see up here that it is actually four and a half by four and a half. So I have my five by seven frame in the hoop with a piece of no-show mesh in it. So we're going to set that, and then we're going to go get the tree block. So I'm going to hit Add, and go get the tree block. <clears throat> Excuse me, I still have morning throat. All right, let's see here. This is a Sunday morning. I like to, I like to make videos on Sunday, so I often sit in my sewing room all day and make videos. So we're going to get our December, and get the tree. So it's probably down here. They're kind of in alphabetical order. Here we go. The 4x4 four four tree, so we're going to grab that. And it says that they should be centered, so they automatically have centered themselves on each other. We're going to hit set and embroidery. All right, so we're ready to go. We're going to start with our quilting as usual. And get the book out of the way here. The book's kind of thick now with all 12 months in there. All right, so I've got my no-show mesh in here. And I've got my pink in the in the needle because that's what I'm going to quilt with. And the first step is going to be the placement line for our batting. So let me get my batting chunk here. This one I think is going to be big enough. I just grabbed a small piece and I think it's going to be big enough. I knew the blocks weren't very big. It's like there's a thread in there. All right. So then we're going to put the back, the batting down over the placement line, oops, without unthreading the machine, hopefully. And then we are going to, step number two is tacking it down. Looking to see what colors it was using for like the tree and stuff. This prickly, prickly pear, um, looks fine with everything, but I wonder if I should use a different color than what they're calling to do go around it because it they used the lighter green and it was a, it's a little bit limey compared to this. I mean, this is going to look fine on the, the little quilt, but all right, so now we're going to trim this close to the stitches. And these are Ginger double curve scissors. I, I always link all of my stuff that I'm using in the 
video <clears throat> in the description below it so that you know if you need to purchase good trimming scissors these are the, i mean my favorite scissor i have used these for years and there's a lot of other um you know like they say applique scissors and stuff they just don't seem to work for me these have always worked really well they're they have a very sharp tip so you can get down into like the all the little teeny crevices when you're trimming so all right so there's our batting then step number three is going to be the placement line for our background fabric <clears throat> all right We'll lay this down and center it. Again, it's got the shape flex on the back. Okay. Get this all centered. And then step number four of the quilting design is the tack down line for the background fabric. <clears throat> I may have to clear my throat a few times. Sorry, guys. It's fall. I, there's some stuff that comes out in the fall that bothers me. So I spend a lot of time clearing my throat in the fall. Okay. So then, of course, step number five is going to be the quilting. So this is going to take off and do the quilting of our little star slash snowflake looking stars. And then I will be back in a moment and we will start the actual block. Okay, so we got our quilting done. It looks real nice on there. So the next step is going to be, this is on page 16 of the instructions. So it's actually step number one of the instruct of the actual block instructions. So we're gonna do the placement line for our, our postage stamp background fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do step number one. I put my green, my emerald green um, thread into my needle because that's what the background piece is going to be. And then I'm going to lay my piece on top. And again, it has the shape flex on the back. Let's get this little tail out of there. Maybe. There we go. All right. And then step number two will be, <clears throat> on page 16, will be actually tacking this down. Now it does say not to trim this piece of fabric at this time. It says to wait. So we're going to wait. And it looks like the tree trunk is pink. So we're going to, we're not going to trim it and we're going to get our pink ready here to do the tree trunk is this is the next step. Looks like after I get rid of another tail. My machine needs to be cleaned and I'm getting little tails. So I get these little tails when it buries the thread. So, okay. So now we're going to put in the pink and we're going to do step number three, which will be the tree trunk. I've never seen a tree trunk with the pink, with the pink. <laughs> with a pink trunk before, but it's going to look just fine. All right. So we're going to do the pink trunk. And then we're going to switch over and do the felt part. But that's where I need to decide what color of thread I'm going to use. I think I'm going to use the darker green just because I think it looks better with my fabric. So I'll show it to you when we get there here. <clears throat> it doesn't take very long to do this little piece. It's just about a minute. So I'll just keep on rolling here so you can watch it. So, All right. So now we're going to go, so it says to use the lighter green, to use this green, but see this green looks kind of weird with this felt. This looks fine on here. I think I'm going to use the darker green. It just looks a little bit better and maybe matches the background a little bit better. So I think that's what I'm going to put in the needle. So that's one change for pay, um, steps four and five. It says to use the lighter green, but I'm going to use the darker one. It just looks better with my felt my fabric wasn't exactly the same color so my colors are just a little off all right so then 
step four is going to be the placement line for our felt. Now the felt is going to be raw edge applique. Yes, so it's raw edge applique. So <clears throat> I like to use the same color for the placement line. And, and then, of course, the next one is going to show, and it's going to be the tack down line, like a triple stitch. All right, so let's get this trimmed. And then we'll lay this over. And I did not cut this, so I'm just going to lay it <clears throat> over so that it I don't waste too much. I have plenty for my next. There's another project with this spell. So there we go. And it's going to tack this down with step number, I think this is five. Yeah, five. And it's going to tack this down. And then we are going to trim it, a, oh, about, maybe about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. But it's going to do like a triple stitch. Yeah, I think the darker colored thread looks better on it. The light looked a little bit too lime green. The prickly pear is kind of an almost olive, light olive green, so. Felt. Okay, so now we're going to trim this. Okay. We're going to trim this, but oh, about an eighth of an inch. Now with these, you definitely need a good sharp scissors. <clears throat> and when you're doing raw edge applique, remember that you're going to see the edge. So you want to try to be as careful and as, you know, you want it to look nice on the edge. So just be careful and take your time trimming. I always like these. They always say trim as desired. <laughs> so you just have to decide how far away you want it to be from the stitching. And as you can see, I'm kind of tipping my scissors a little bit because it makes my cut a little bit more flat. You know, it's not so beveled on the top because of the curved scissors. So I like to kind of turn it a little bit. And I do this with the embroidery leather too. The embroidery leather, sometimes you have to, you don't have to be quite as careful with the felt because it's the same color all the way through. But you know, the embroidery leather sometimes has a white background. So you have to kind of make sure you don't see that white, you know, bit on the top. So I like to turn my scissors and make it a little bit straighter if possible. Oops, I missed a little spot here. All right, we put this, <clears throat> and then we're going to do the bottom. It's gonna look great. Actually, I really like the darker th thread. I'm glad I went with that. It works better for this, and it matches my, you know, matches my background fabric pretty well. So, all right. So I have a couple little spots. I'm gonna trim a little bit. That yeah, looks better. I've got a little bit of a notch there. That looks pretty good. All right. So I, sometimes I'll go back and I'll just kind of check. <laughs> I don't always do a perfect job trimming it. Raw edge out. Okay. All right. There's our little tree. So now the last section is all the ornaments. So I'll probably just do all of those off camera. So let's just talk about the colors. So the next step is going to be the garland. That's pink. The ornaments on number is uh, number seven is a green. The red ornaments is a set number eight. And then number nine is the white stars. So I'm just going to do six, seven, eight, and nine. and just some stitching. And then I'll come back. And I think that might be it. Oh, no, we have to trim the background and do the postage stamp part. So I'll go do step six, seven, eight, and nine on page 16, and then I'll be back and we'll do the trimming together to get ready to do the postage stamp um, satin stitch outline. Okay, so I just finished up step six, seven, eight, and nine on the, the bottom of page 16, and we're at the top of page 17 now. So now it says to trim our fabric close to the stitches here, because this is where the little postage stamp um, <clears throat> outline is going to be. And that one's also going to be in the white. Or the cream, if you chose cream. I have white threads, so that seemed to work. The white worked better with my fabric, so. All right, so we're going to trim this close to the stitches. Get some of the lint off. There we go. 
and then we're gonna I'm gonna I've still got the white the last color of the little stars was white so I've still got the white in my um, needle and I'm gonna go ahead and start the postage stamp edging and that then I'll be back when that is finished and then this block will also be completed okay so there we are our little Christmas tree isn't that cute very cute so that one's all done and if you give me a few minutes I'm gonna go get my hoop ready for the next block and that will be the holly I think yes so the holly so if you give me a few minutes I'll go back and get my other um, and get my hoop ready with another piece of shape flex we're gonna trim these all at the end so I'll just take this one out for now and we'll be ready to do the holly block I'll be right back okay so I've got my hoop all ready with another piece of no-show mesh and we're gonna do the holly block so I've got my holly block fabrics here so we need the white postage stamp background so I've got that and then I've got some shape flex SF 101 on the back and then we need a green background for the um, main block and I've got SF 101 on the back of that so shape flex on that and I went ahead and put the darker green in my needle because we're going to do the quilting with that. And on this one, it says to use Christmas 13, which I didn't have. So we've use, been using Christmas 2 for the quilting. So I'm going to go get my quilting design first here. Again, it's going to be the 4x4 four four one. So we'll go get Christmas 2. See if I can get it here. I always have to be so careful when because it, <laughs> it scrolls so fast. Second here, Christmas two. Yes, Christmas two. And then I'm gonna get block by block. And then the four by four one, which is this one, and set that one. <clears throat> and again, it's gonna end up being four and a half by four and a half. So I've got my five by seven hoop in. And then we're going to get the holly. So I'm going to hit uh, add and go get my holly design. We're almost done with all the blocks. Can you believe we've gone through all of these little quilts this year? Okay, so where's the holly? Here it is. Here's the holly. So we're going to get that one. And this one again is supposed to be centered and it came in centered inside the quilting. So we're going to hit set. And embroidery okay so we're gonna get ready here and do our quilting so the first step get my pieces out of the way here I got to get my batting first step is going to be our placement line for the batting <clears throat> get my chunk of batting ready I've got cords under my feet that I keep snagging I usually sit with the computer sitting next to me when I'm doing these videos and I have the cord running under my feet so I have to be careful not to get it with the chair. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and lay this down. Oops, got this little tail we don't need in there. Over the placement line and then we're going to tack down the batting and trim it. Oops, almost had an accident there, didn't we? My batting wasn't any too large on that side. I'm just using up scraps when I do these, especially these little things. <clears throat> it's nice to get them used up. Okay. Then we're going to trim the batting here. These have been really fun. I, I've enjoyed these little mini quilts a lot. They they went together. Some of them took a while though that, you know, even though they weren't very big, there were some that had a lot of embroidery on them. And one of the, the fall ones that had the house, was it September? Oh my gosh, that the house one took quite a while, but they're, they've been really fun. These have been nice and quick blocks. Okay, so we got the 
batting quilt, um, whoops, trimmed. It's just stuck to me. Then I'm going to do the third step, which will be the placement line for the fabric. So I'll get my fabric ready here. Whoops, now see it did our little trick. Didn't pick up that bobbin thread. So like I said, don't panic if that happens because it does happen, especially if you're using just stabilizer because you know, there's just nothing for it to grab onto. So I'm just gonna take my bobbin out my pre-wound bobbin, you know, and then that bobbin case is a little tight. I'm just going to bring it around. I'm not going to cut it off. I'm just going to leave a little tail here. Put the hoop back in, and then we're just going to back up. So come over here. We'll hit the negative positive needle, and we're just going to hit the up arrow. Or you might have a negative spool that would take you to the beginning of this, the step that we just did. So this is step three. Okay. And then, oops, make sure I got everything down here. And then hopefully it'll catch this time. It just, you just don't have much to catch into. And sometimes it does it like with just, um, like when you just have one layer of, you know, one layer of um, fabric too, because, you know, there's not much for it to grab into. But it does it mostly for me when I'm just working with stabilizer. Because, you know, we so often are doing this quilting technique that we're, just going to stitch a little bit on stabilizer. So, all right, so then I'm going to lay my background fabric centered over there. And then step four is going to be that tack down line. Now I will list in the, um, description of this video, I will list my video that I did about taking out some of the the tack down lines and the like placement lines. So like these last two lines we did. So let's say you only have a four by four hoop. You could actually do this, but you would just need to remove these last two lines that we just sewed um, and then just tape, like tape down your backing in there and do the quilting because it would actually fit in a four by four hoop then. Um, these designs are pretty small. And um, I'm, I'm going to, I think I'm going to have a, an older 4x4 four four machine that some friends gave me. Um, they found it at a garage sale and they thought I'd want it. So I think I'm going to have one and I'm going to do some videos with that little machine just to show you what you all you can do to work around the fact that you have a small machine. <laughs> so that'll be coming, coming soon. The machine's still being serviced. It's got a, it's got a couple of issues and uh, we're trying to find some parts because it's an old machine. It's like 20 years old, but it, it it still works just fine and it runs a lot like the newer 4x4 machines. So anyway, so we're going to, I'm going to have something to do some fun little, um, fun little like uh, videos for like basic beginning videos with a 4x4 machine. And you know, 4x4s are really fun and there's a lot you can do in one. So don't be surprised what you'll be able to do in it. <laughs> All right, so here's our quilting. I've been yik yakking during the quilting, so here's our quilting pattern. And then we're going to start on the actual block. So this is on page 18 of the instructions. And we're going to start with the postage stamp part. So, All right. <clears throat> and I think the outline is red. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and put my white thread in here for the, so step number one of the actual design is going to be the placement line for that background, that postage step background. So I'm hoping the little machine will work. My friends were so happy to be able to find it for me, and it's it's a really cute little machine. It's a Winnie the Pooh machine. It's a little embroidery sewing Um and I had one years ago. I sold it long, long time ago, and it's probably 20 years old. But if it works, that it'll it'll work for what I need it to do. So, all right. So here's our background fabric. It also has the Shape Flex SF101 on it. And you know what? <laughs> Look at here. I've got a piece of yellow thread in here, so I'm going to try to get that out because it's probably going to show through. Okay. All right. So we'll put that down over the put that down over our background our placement line and we're going to tack this down this is step number two now it does say do not trim the fabric at this time so we're not going to trim yet we're just going to tack it down 
And then we're going to do the leaves, and the leaves are done in that. Um, we also needed a piece of, of the felt. And I'm going to do the same thing with these, I think. I'm going to use the darker green. It calls for the lighter green for the leaves, but I'm going to use my darker green. It looks better with the, with the felt. So then my, my bright green is a little too bright for that felt. It looks a little weird with it. So we're going to put the, green, the dark green in. And you can use light green if yours matches a little bit better. Mine just is a little, looks a little weird with it. <clears throat> my green, my other green, this green was lighter and so was the other one. So it looked a little different. So, all right, so we're going to put our little, and we're not going to trim this piece until a little later. We're going to put our uh, placement lines on for the little holly leaves. And then these are also going to be raw edge applique. Let's see here. I might be able to get another one out of this if I'm careful with how I put my leaves on. Okay, so we're going to put these on here. That's why I don't cut these. I just lay it down and you can usually conserve a lot of fabric. <laughs> so we're going to do that and then it's going to do the tack down lines and it's going to be like a little triple stitch and then we'll trim those. So I'm using the darker green instead of the lighter one. That's what it calls for. I just thought it would look, it just looks better with the felt in my case. All right, and then we're going to trim and then we're going to do a bunch of little stitching. Okay. So let's do these trims. Yeah, I lived with a real small sewing machine for a long time. When I first got a machine, I had a 4x4 and a 5x7 maximum hoop. And so I learned to get around that with having software. So if you do have a little basic, even just basic software, you can do a lot with those smaller machines. And I actually had... PE design at the time. So I had also a staged hoop that worked with those machines. And <clears throat> those um, staged hoops work really well if you have the PE design software because you can split designs into several pieces or two or three pieces. And oh my gosh, it really gave me a lot because like my 5x7 machine was like 5 by 12 then, so it really helps. So I'm trimming these close to the stitch, well, maybe an eighth of an inch, about an eighth of an inch away. And I'm kind of tipping my scissors to get it a little flatter. Let's see if I can get in between here. Those are kind of tight. So you have little teeny scissors. I have little tips on them for the, when you're working in the middle there. All right. So I've had quite a few machines over the years. But I did have um, small ones for the first quite a few years that I embroidered. And, you know, we all want bigger hoops. You know, we all have hoop envy, envy and we want bigger hoops. And so <clears throat> it took me a while to be able to afford to get a bigger machine. And and I did uh, work, use the software. And I, you know, did use that split hoop and it does work. And the little one, the little 4x4 machine has one too, and it's like um, 7 inches long. So you can almost get 5 by 7 It's 4 by 4 by like 6 and 3 quarters or something. And that really helped. I mean, I could do quite a few things with that. All right. So I'm just going to trim this up a little bit. I got a couple little funny spots in my points there. There we go. I always have a little trouble with raw edge applique. You, you want to make sure you're... Your points look nice. Okay, so there's our little leaves. And then the next step, so I'll probably do the next three steps before I come back because then we need to trim our fabric piece here. Then the step five on page 18, let's see, put this over here so you can see it, is going to be in white and it's the leaf detail. And then we're going to do the holly berries. Oh, I'm just going to do two parts, then then I'll come back. So we're going to do the, the leaf detail and the holly berries. So holly berries will be in red. And then we're going to trim the fabric to do the postage stamp outline. So I'll be right back after I get those two parts done.
Okay, so there's the holly berries and see it did the little detail in the in the leaves. So now we're ready to trim. This is at the bottom of page 18, step six, where we're going to trim this off. We're going to trim our postage stamp background off here. Post the stitches maybe. My scissors are, I'm, I'm about to need a new pair of scissors. I use these scissors nearly every day. <laughs> So they get dull after a while. All right. And I found that it's really, really hard to find people to sharpen scissors, especially these specialty type ones. And it costs so much because I usually have to ship them away that it's just cheaper to buy a new pair of scissors. <laughs> so I just use them until I can't cut with them anymore and I buy a new pair. Because <laughs> I do go through a lot of those scissors. I use them every single day. All right, so there is our trimmed postage stamp edge, and I'm going to be leaving the red in to do that. So I've still got my red thread in, and we're going to start the postage stamp um, satin stitch edge. And I think, let me check, page 9, top of that type. Oh, there's still a couple of little um, things to do. So this is going to be the postage stamp edge, and then there's some little dots that are going to be pink in the last step. Okay, got the postage stamp edge all done, and we're ready for the little pink. It's sort of like little stars around the holly, and I've got my pink thread in, and it's going to do those, and then we will be done with the second block in this video, and then the last one's going to be the little uh, Santa hat. Okay, so we're all done with this block. Whoops, looks like i got a little tail to trim off up here. We'll get that done. There we go. There's the little holly block. Isn't that cute? Whoops, I got the little tail ended up down here, didn't it? But isn't that cute? So now we're on to the little Santa hat. So you'll have to give me a few minutes again to get my hoop ready again with some no show mesh. We're going to take this out and we'll do all the trimming at the end like we usually do. All right, so give me a couple minutes. I'll be back and we'll be ready for the final block of this little mini quilt. And it's the little hat and he's going to have a red background. So it's the red background, the green postage stamp background, and then here's the hat. So I think all of these have the shape flex on them. And then we're going to be using that little piece of fuzzy stuff, <laughs> the little minky-like fabric that's in the embellishment kit for this one. So, okay, so I'll be right back once I get some more stabilizer. Okay, so we're ready for our final block, the hat block. And this one has um, the red background, the green postage stamp. These all have shape flex on the back. And then um, the hat part, the top part of the hat is red and has shape flex. Um, and then it uses that little piece that's in the embellishment kit, that little fuzzy, the little fuzzy kind of minky-like stuff. It also calls for a little piece, and see it's here somewhere, um, a little piece of water-soluble topping. When you're working with that fuzzy stuff, you, you, we'll, we'll put this over the top of it most likely. So I've got a little piece of that too. And the no-show mesh. All right, so let's get our, we're going to use the stars again for this block. Let me hit back to the beginning. So this one we're going to use, I used, instead of star seven, I used stars three. So we're going to go get stars three first for our quilting. So I'm going to get all the way down to the bottom with that. Well, you know, went, went all the way past all the S's. Here we go. Well, for stars three, there it is. Block by block. We're going to do that four by four again. Yep, four by four. <clears throat> Here it is. Set that one, and then we're going to go get the hat block. So add that. I've already got my red thread in my needle because we're going to quilt this red backing with the red thread. So I'm all ready for that. So here's my files. And December. Can you believe that we've done all 12 of these little blocks? They are, are these little quilts. They're so cute. So where is our hat? Here it is right here. A hat block 
And these need to come in centered according to the quilting instructions. So they're again centered in here. I'm going to hit set and embroidery. And this is in my 5x7 hoop as all the other ones have been. And we're going to start with the quilting. So let's get this. Oops, just lost my water soluble. I got to find that. I'll need that in a little bit. Give me a second here to get my camera organized again. I've got my no show mesh in here. And step number one is going to be the placement line for our batting. Gotta reach my batting. I always end everything ends up on the floor here. Everything ends up on the floor. Okay. So we got a little piece here. Will this be wide enough? Ooh, just barely. Let's use this little chunk here. Gonna lay our batting down and then we're going to step number two is going to tack it down and then we'll trim these have been so fun i like it when blocks are quick and fun every now and then you run into a project that the blocks just take forever and i'm and um a couple of the kimberbell like um bench pillows oh my gosh the, the quilts were, or the blocks were so intense like um the twilight boulevard was one of those and i the other one i want to make is the um main street celebration it's the the patriotic one and that one looks like it's going to be pretty intense too but not all of them are like that so okay so we're going to trim this because some of those blocks just took forever because <laughs> they had lots and lots of applique but they're fun and it makes them lots very dimensional and pretty all right but simple blocks can be really pr pretty and cute too and like these are just adorable but they're still simple all right get that trimmed oops can't quite get a hold of it there all right so there is our trimmed batting, and then we're going to step do step number three, which will be the placement line for the fabric. And I gotta grab my red fabric here. Oh, that one caught okay. It doesn't do it all the time. I don't know why it does it this part of the time. It's weird. Okay, so then we're gonna get this all centered. I've got my shape flex on the back. centered and then step number four is the tack down so if I only had a four by four hoop I could have done this whole thing in a four by four hoop if I would have removed this the last step and this step and then just did the quilting um, and then the little block would have fit in a four by four. So that's something that, you know, I might do some of uh, something with the little machine when I get it, just to show you what you can do to, to, to get around that. So, all right, so step number five, as usual, is the quilting. I'm gonna go ahead and get it started if this is the little stars pattern. And I will be back when we're ready to start the applique. Okay, so I've switched over to my darker green because the postage stamp center is going to be the darker green. And the first step in the actual design on page 20 is the outline or the placement line for this piece of fabric. And then we're going to tack it down, but it says to not trim it. So we're not going to trim it right away. So let's tack this down. Okay, and then I'm going to lay this down on here and tack it down. And again, this has the shape flex on the back. And then I think I'm going to be putting my red back in because we're going to be doing the hat next. But it says not to trim this, so we won't trim it right away. It's going to go around it twice. I'm anxious to get this one put together. I bet it's going to be really cute. And then I'll have something to put in my little frame, my little 14 by 14 frame for every month of the year. So I was so, that's why I saw, I saw these and I thought, you know, these are going to be cute to do 
as a series of videos that I thought everybody would enjoy them. And then I had something to put in my little frame. I brought that home from my dad's and I only had a couple things to put in it and I'd like to leave it out. So this way I have something for every month. Plus I have the extra couple things I had in it before. So, All right, so we're going to put the red back in and we're going to do the placement line for the hat fabric. So that's this red. And this is step number three on page 20. And then we'll lay this down. Now with the, tri the hat we are going to trim the hat fabric. Let's see here. And then we're going to do the outline for the hat, I think. All right, so let me get this little tail out of here. We'll lay this down. Do our applique. And this is step number four. And then it says to trim the hat fabric. And then it looks like it's going to do the satin stitch outline on the hat. So we'll trim this and then let it do the satin stitch. And then it looks like we're going to work with that little fuzzy, fuzzy stuff. We'll probably have fuzzy white flakes all over the place. I think we'd use that for, didn't we use that for the, the snowman? Maybe in the very first one. I remember it was very, it, it, it had lots of little, I had lots of little white pieces all over the place. <laughs> all right, so we'll trim our hat. Just a second here, I'm almost knocking things over. Okay, and then we're going to do the satin stitches. So I'm going to leave the red in. We're going to do these satin stitches. And I'll be right back in a minute. And we'll start working with the little minky type fabric. Okay, so I've got my white thread in because the little, the little fabric is white. And I'm going to go ahead and do step number six, which is going to be the placement line. And get this out of the package here. It's kind of like a really short minky. And then what it says to do is we're going to lay it over the placement lines with the with the grain, and you can tell that you know there's a nap here with it going down. And then we're going to cover it up with that white uh, or with the uh, water soluble topping just to keep you know the fuzzy stuff under bay so it says place the brim and pom-pom fabric right side up with the nap going down towards the bottom of the hoop tape in place and then place the brim and pom-pom wash away topping over it so we're going to do that so let's get the these little tails out of here first and then we will lay the fabric on so that it covers up like that Fleece would be another stuff that you could use for this. That would work really well. So do that. And then we're going to lay this over the top of this. And I'm just going to tape them both down at the same time. So I'm going to lay this over. I just had a little scrap of that stuff in my, in my uh, water-soluble tube. And I'm just going to tape these both down so, at the same time. Just to keep that plastic stuff from moving around on me. Okay. All right, and then it's going to do the tack down, which is step number, I think it's number seven on the top of page 20. Yes. Stitch the brim and pom-pom tack down line. And that's number seven. And I'm just going to kind of hold this plastic so it doesn't scoot on me at all. And it's just going to do the... tack down line for us. And then, and that was, and it said to use the white for this because the decorative, uh, the stitch around the outside edge is going to be decorative. So it did say to use white. Oops, looks like I might be scooted a little bit. So may have to hold this down. Sometimes this plastic scoots. Oops, got a little of my tape. I'll have to pull that out. I didn't realize I taped down that low. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now it says to remove all the tape, trim the fabric close to the stitch line, and then stitch the brim and pom-pom decorative stitches, which is number eight, and then we're going to remove the excess top. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. 
excuse me, this stuff also makes me sneeze, so I apologize. Anything fuzzy like that. I did a teddy bear class once. And I cut out all the teddy bears for everybody out of, like, you know, fake fur. And I couldn't talk afterwards. I must be allergic to the fuzzy stuff. <laughs> and I couldn't talk. It was terrible. All right, so we're going to trim this fuzzy stuff. Close to the stitches. And again, this is going to be a decorative stitch, so you want to be pretty close. So I'm trying to get as close as I can. And it is kind of stretchy, so when you feel it, you'll feel that it's kind of stretchy. Minky has a little stretch to it, too. Some of it's more stretchy than others, but... Okay, let's see if we can get it closer here. But I remember when we used this before, I had fuzz everywhere. <laughs> I think they put it on some of the hats or something. Was it, wasn't it the snowman? Seems like it was the snowman they used it on. And then maybe we had something fuzzy for the Easter one, too. Ooh, I'm going to go grab my uh, tape roller, too, when we get ready to do this here. Okay, so let's trim this one. This one's going to be a little trickier. Point this down just a little bit more. Because it's got all these little ridges in it. The bottom of the hat brim here. So I don't use much like fake furs and stuff. I have this wonderful teddy bear pattern that I love to teach that class, and I probably will. But when we do it again, I won't use fur. And you could use fur if you wanted to, but I probably won't use fur. I'll probably use cotton fabric to make the teddy bear out of, or like that um, suede type fabric. I think that would be really cool too. But the fuzzy stuff makes, I must be allergic to it or something. Because I remember after that, I couldn't talk for like two or three days. It was like I had laryngitis, but I didn't feel like I had laryngitis because I wasn't sick at all. So it had to have been the fuzzy stuff. So this stuff does make me sneeze too. Okay, there we got that. So let me go get my, uh, my lint roller here behind me <clears throat> so that we can get some of this foofy stuff off of here. I always have a lint roller close by because I use it for a lot of different things. I use it on the long arm to get the little, you know, the pieces of strings off. And it works really well for fuzzy fabric, too. Yeah, okay, got that. So I think that should be good. Looks like it's pretty, pretty close here. There's a little spot here that could be trimmed a little bit more, maybe. Okay, so let me get that out of the way. And we'll get this little tail out of here. And then we're ready for step number, let's see, on step number, trim the fabric. And we, yeah, so now we're ready for step number eight. So we're going to do the decorative. And then it says to, so trim, stitch the brim and decorative st outlines, remove the excess topping, trim the stamp background fabric. So then we're going to trim this fabric to do the last part. Okay, so we still got our white on. And we're going to do the decorative outline. So I'll be back in a minute and we'll take the, the stabilizer off, you know, the topping off and we'll trim this and then we'll be ready for the stamp outline. Okay, so it did the little decorative motif stitch around the outside edge here. We're going to take this little bit of extra stay or the you know the topper off. So I'm just gonna, I just kind of stuck my the tip of my scissors into it, and it'll pull right off. So just kind of get it started. There we go. Pulls right off. Even though it says it's water soluble, I very rarely actually put water on it. There are some times when you have to because of what you've done with it, but most of the time I can just pull it off. There we go. All right. Oh my gosh, it's all fuzzy now. Okay, so now and then we're going to trim this because this the stamp, yeah, the stamp outline is white also. So we're going to trim this and we'll leave the white thread in and do the little satin stitch. All right, 
whoops, make sure I'm getting it trimmed in the right spot here. I got all the fuzzy stuff off, or the plastic off. All right, so there's that. All right, so there, we're ready for the stamp outline, and this is step number nine on the top of page 21. So we'll do that, and it's also in white. And then the last step we'll do is some little stars around the little hat, and those are going to be in pink. So I'll be back when the little stamp outline is done. Okay, so we've got the satin stitch outline, and I've got my pink in the needle, and it's going to do like the little stars around the hat. And that is the last step of the last block of the last mini quilt. I can't believe it. We've we've done all gotten all the blocks done of all the mini quilts, and then the next video will be the assembly. So then I it will have them all done. I just can't believe it. It's been so much fun doing these. So so the, I'll be back in a moment when we're ready to do the trimming. So I'll I'll move my camera over and we'll trim our three little blocks. Okay, so we're all ready to trim our little blocks. These are also going to be trimmed at four and a half inches square. So here's that last little block after the last step. Isn't it adorable with the little, the little pink stars around it? So that's our little hat block, the holly block, and the, the tree block. So we're going to trim these three. I've got my same little rulers out here, so I'm going to use my... Um, square orange pop ruler. This is the four and a half inch square one. I'm just going to line it up with my outline basting stitches there. And then I like to put the little bit bigger one in too. Just gives me a little something more to hang on to. I've got my Martelli roundabout here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push in pull back to the corner, and then forward. That seems to work the best for me working with these rulers. Hold it down nice and tight. But, oh my gosh, these rotary, these, uh, <laughs> these, these roundabouts, they're so awesome. And they actually have a smaller one, too, that I love when I'm doing real small stuff. This is the bigger one. This is like 16 inches or something. And the other one I think is like 10. It's really great. And I use it a lot for little stuff. So there is our little, our little tree. And then here's the, the holly. So we'll do the same thing with that one. Get the small one first. Get it lined up with my outline to kind of help me get it centered. And then bigger one on and I'll turn it and again I'm left-handed so I am turning to, towards the right instead of the left if you're right-handed you'd be turning towards the left because I'm using a left-handed rotary cutter I can't cut with my right hand but um, I feel more secure with my left I have a right-handed rotary cutter too <laughs> all right so we're going to do all four sides of that one. Oh my gosh, look at there. There's the little holly. Isn't that cute? And then we'll do our little hat. I just love that little fuzzy stuff. I'm glad I, I got it all cleaned up. It, it was It's very fuzzy, and it, boy, does it ever lint all over the place. So we're going to get this one all lined up, too. I don't do much with minky type stuff stuff because it just gets all over your sewing room. Okay, so we're going to turn this one and trim it. These orange pop rulers, I was so glad when they came out with these because they work for a lot of things. You don't need to just do them for Kimberbell projects. I mean, you know, these are very common, the, the, they're very common block sizes. So, you know, you can use them for anything to trim. Especially if you're trying to, like, you know, center something in the middle. All right. So there's our little hat. Okay. So we've done all nine blocks. So here's our hat, the little holly, and the tree from this video. 
And then here's all of our other blocks. So we had our ornament, the present, the bell, and then the first video was the merry mail, the candy canes, and the snowflakes. Oh my gosh, look at all those little blocks. So, we're, so in the next video, we're going to put these all together and make it into our little mini quilt. So thank you so much for joining me for part three of the December Kimberbell mini quilt. And I will see you in um, video four for the assembly. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up on YouTube. It gives it helps out my channel. My channel is called Sew Along with Jan. And if you haven't already subscribed to it, please do. It's free. And it, then you will get notifications about when I have new content out um, on my YouTube channel. We I, I also have a you or a Facebook group called Sew Along with Jan. And come join us there too if you do Facebook, because then we talk about the projects and show pictures of the projects that we've been doing and so on. So that it's a fun group to be in. So so thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in part four for the assembly. Thanks everybody.